Bonjour, je suis Nicolas Claire et bienvenue à Dans ma tasse, euh, épisode numéro 179. Aujourd'hui, Steve. Ah, 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 not yet, come off, come on, get out, go on, au revoir. <laughs> Imposters, what's going on there? It's because I'm in blue, that's it? Yes, it's because of the blue, there's not enough red. Hello, everybody, and welcome to In My Mug, episode 179. I am your host, Stephen Layton, not him. Welcome, thank you for joining me. Today I'm on location. I told you four or five weeks ago that I was going to be out and about. Some of these in my mugs are going to be a little bit lighter than normal. And this is one of the big ones. I am in Paris, Gay Paris, in, uh, in the wonderful country of France. Uh, I am in a coffee shop called Telescope, which has opened two weeks ago? Three weeks, three weeks ago. Three weeks old. Trois semaines. <laughs> trying to teach me French, it's really not working. Je m'appelle Stephen. That's it, that's it, that's all I've got. Um, so it is, uh, it's in the heart of Paris. We are around about five minutes walk from the Louvre. Um, it is an absolutely gorgeous location. If you're in Paris, you must come. In fact, I am gonna do this, although I promised I would do no editing. I'm gonna put a map on here so you can see where it is, and I'm gonna put the address so you can come visit. Job done. Anyway, we don't talk about that any mind mug, we talk about uh, the coffee. And this week's coffee is going to be Brazil Fazenda Cachoeira, Yellow Bourbon. One of my all-time favourite coffees. I save this coffee for whenever I'm travelling. So the last time we did this last year, I was in Bogota in Colombia during the WBC. And I thought, what coffee can I take that I know lots about, I can talk on camera for ages about, and I don't need to sit down and think about and read. Because contrary to popular belief, I don't know everything about all the coffees we sell. I have to remember them and learn them. But Cachoeira, I know, like, the back of my hand. So, farm is called Fazenda Cachoeira. It's in the Sao Paulo state. Now, everybody thinks it's in Minas Gerais but it's three miles from the border of Minas Gerais, very close to the town of Pocos de Caldos. Um, it is a farm that's been in the uh, Carvalho Diaz family for the last 107 years. Um, they have trees on the farm, which they know were original and planted 107 years ago, and some of this coffee is from those trees, which is pretty amazing. It's a Bourbon varietal. Uh, Bourbon is one of the oldest uh, heirloom varietals that we kind of know about. Lots of coffees that we talk about varietal wise can be traced back to Bourbon or have some Bourbon in them somewhere. Um, it's a yellow Bourbon, so the fruit of the cherry is yellow. Um, this is something that you kind of see uh, a lot of, but 170 years ago you didn't see so much of, so it takes some selective uh, picking from the seeds to get more seedlings, and that's why we see more yellow now. But these guys must have been one of the four, you know, forefathers of bringing yellow bourbon into the mainstream. Um, owned by a guy called Gabriel. Uh, currently, he's the current custodian. Been in the family, as I say, for a long time. But Gabriel doesn't live in Brazil anymore. He lives in Canada because his son goes to school in Canada and um, he manages the farm and goes back a number of times a year to see how things are doing. Um, I, go, I can't remember what he was and you're gonna, in fact I am gonna, another bit of editing for me, I'm doing, killing myself today, but I, uh, there's a link below of a video I did when I was at Cachoeira a couple of years ago. Um, I got all soppy and emotional and all like, oh look where I am, it's lovely. But this farm means so much to me. I can remember the first time I ever tasted this coffee. I was at a cupping at our importers. I was learning about coffee. I was very green, just like the coffee. And I, I tasted it, I cupped it, and I was just like, that's amazing. Like, I suddenly got that coffee could be different, and I understood that coffee can be uh, something that, like, I, 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 yeah, I remember the first time I got a descriptor and I, uh, at a cupping, and I phoned my wife up, and I was saying, oh, I tasted this, and, and everybody else agreed with me. And she says, but you say you taste stuff all the time. And it's like, I didn't know whether it, it was just me. I, uh, I had some confirmation. And this coffee was one of those confirmations for me where I suddenly went, I get this, I understand it. Um, it's a great espresso. It's a great uh, brewed coffee. It's a great cappuccino. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to trying it in a minute with the, with the guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whap you on pause. 
Um, I'm not going to make coffee today, I'm going to get people to make it for me. Um, and the guy's got to come on, I'm going to talk a little bit about the coffee shop and talk a little bit about the coffee. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I, I hope you enjoy that. So uh, I'll be back in just a minute. So we're back. We're back. I have two guests. Would you like to both say hello to In My Mug Type people? Yeah. Hello, In My Mug Type people. Yes, they're very nice. No, I, I, I'm one of them sometimes. <laughs> they don't bite, they are very, very nice people. And uh, yes, so this is David Nigel Flynn. I have to do the Nigel, I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, is, that, is that the law? I believe so. It's at least common practice. Cool. So uh, David is not. French, as you may tell from the accent. Um, where are you from? Where do you hail from? I hail from uh, the United States of America. And uh, I knew of David before I met him because he worked in a very cool coffee shop uh, called uh, Murky Coffee, <laughs> which uh, Nick Cho was like. I, 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 I have some people sometimes that meet me and go, oh, Steve, you're that coffee guy that does the videos. Well, Nick was my coffee guy. They go, Nick, you're that coffee guy that did podcasts. <laughs> and like, so when I found out that David worked for, uh, worked for Nick, it was like, you're my friend. <laughs> so, and, and, then, and then like he became a proper friend because Nick might hit me or something. Oh, so, God. Yeah. Oh, but, <laughs> but yeah, so, so um, we have a real French person now, though. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Try to pinch my, my opening titles. Je m'appelle Nicolas. <laughs> Doesn't speak any English at all. Mais c'est bien, quand même. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to nice in my mug. Hello in my mug. Yeah, so hello. Nicholas is uh, kind of not in coffee originally. No. Your job before was? I used to be a photographer and um, I fall into coffee through photography and slowly I put my camera away to concentrate and focus on coffee and that's how it happened. Another person that left a job that he wasn't particularly enjoying and then to do something that he really wanted to do and enjoy and yeah. I kind of see lots of things in common there. But <laughs> <laughs> so should we try the espresso before it goes yes. too cold? We should, we should really try this. So uh, we're all going to try it together and um, I hope you're trying it too. So. So, when I taste this as an espresso, like, Brazils, for me, do certain things. Brazils are great espresso bases, and, and if you disagree, you should say, sh you don't, don't know what you're talking about, Steve, but they're great espresso bases because they're sweet. Uh, there's never too much acidity. Like, there, I'm getting a little bit of, like, caramel, a mm -hmm. little bit of toffee, um, a little bit of chocolate, um, and a little kind of nutty edge to it, like a walnut kind of... Fresh they, almonds. Yeah, yeah, fresh almonds. Um, but, you know, it's just like really drinkable. Huge body. Yeah. So, David made this and he pulled the first shot and he tried it and went, oh, that's actually good. Like <laughs> the first one. Not because Cashwara isn't body. good, but it was the first shot he pulled. And again, we were talking about this that it forgives and Brazil's tend to mm. allow a little bit more. Yeah, you yeah. know. It's forgivable. Mm. Very much so, very much so. So I, I think it's a great single origin espresso. It's not going to blow your socks off. You're not going to go, oh, acidity, fruits, you know. But nor should it. It's a Brazil, you know, and it's a pulp natural Brazil that should be sweet. It feels like a warm blanket. A, a warm blanket. <laughs> so That's very conceptual. Yeah, yeah. I, I know somebody that would get, Rasmus would get very annoyed with you if you said about a conceptual copy mm. descriptor like that. Yeah, I think mm. a warm blanket is good for the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go into the cap and we're, we're going to share oh. this one and you failed there. Oh well. Did you say I look like this? I've been judging Dale who works for me and you two guys yeah. now. Uh, he's practicing for competition and every cap I end up checking the phone. Like, I really shouldn't do that, that's so annoying. Sorry, it's a beautiful cappuccino. English people. <laughs> Get it, obviously. You want to try? Yeah. Yeah. So, in milk I kind of... It, disappears a little bit because mm. of the sweetness, like there isn't anything punching through for me. It's nice. Again, warm blanket is probably quite a good, Rasmus will hate this, um, quite a good descriptor, but it, it's nice. It's, you know. It kind of goes with the milk almost too well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, they're like, when I, when I say that this is one of my favourite coffees and people like question why is it one of your favourites, it's just like, because it's a coffee coffee and that just tastes like coffee coffee. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, <laughs> sometimes I want to taste, sometimes I want to drink. And Cachoeira for me is a great drinking coffee. I mm. enjoy it, it's nice, but I don't have to think too much about it. Yeah. So, brewed coffee. I'm going to drink this in my lovely mug here, which... Would you like to know about the mug, Jack? I, I would like to. Yeah. My, my Paris Marathon mug that I'm running tomorrow. Who's the mug running the marathon? Oh, man. Yeah. Don't tell me you're going to run tomorrow. <laughs> um, I'm not going to put the time up on screen because I'll just be too embarrassed. I, I probably won't even finish it. But, <laughs> but yeah, this is my Paris Marathon mug because I've signed up to do the marathon. That's why I'm here and also to enjoy these guys. You company. don't mind if we're drinking our French cups? No, that's fine. It's Persian good. cups, you know. They're, they're snobbish. It's cups. not in my glass. Yeah, it's, it's in my mug. Yeah, sorry. I'm going to lift my small finger and drink it like. <laughs> <laughs> This is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, this takes me back to when I first cooked it, that first mm. moment where I tasted it, and I just went, that's really sweet. And like, it's cooled quite a bit because mm. we've been talking, but it's like, a sign of a good coffee is when it's cold, it still tastes nice. It's still yeah? there. It's still there, it's still a nice drink. And it is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the descriptions it should be, it's just sweet, caramel, toffee, nutty, that's delicious. So that is in my mug. Before we finish, I, I love having guests on because I don't have to do all the work. And I want you two guys to tell uh, these people why, when they're in Paris, they should come here. And what's happening in Paris and what's kind of... So, first of all, how the shop came about. I'll give you proper questions. So. Okay. Um, the shop came about when Nico should start that one, that question. So, so how did the shop, what, what decided that you were going to put the camera down and open the Because I was missing it in Paris. Because yeah. I was looking for a place like this in Paris and I didn't know how, where to find it and we were hoping for a coffee shop to open and we heard that some people would come from the United States, from the Netherlands, from hopefully from England and nothing was really happening. So I was thinking about doing it and I was talking with Dave and he said like, um, yeah, but you think it would work? Yeah. Um. I, I, I can't believe that in Paris there isn't this, like, like you, every corner there is a coffee shop. That's like very true. And everybody's drinking coffee, but they're drinking some generic Italian. That's or exactly the problem. Generic is the world. It is. It's really bad. Yeah. Like, and it is. It's not great. And look, you, then in the same bars, they're drinking amazing wine. They're eating, like, the food is just stunning. Don't like, try to give them bad bread. Yeah. Like, oh, come on. And you give them amazingly bad coffee and they're just like, that's coffee. Like if it was a Coca-Cola or a Sprite, this is always the same, wherever you are. You but it on. makes no sense when everybody's enjoying everything else, but not, not the coffee. It's it's just a, it, it seems like it's a fuel or not, it's not, a... Not enjoying it is almost part of, become part of... <laughs> No, it's not even coffee. Enjoying. They got used to this coffee. Yeah. And when they come here, they sometimes say, oh, it's not bitter enough. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, but it's changing. Yeah, so, it's changing. so there are places, because you're roasting your own coffee here, aren't you, as well? We are roasting our own coffee. Yeah. Really cool. And, and really cool that you're using a roaster that is like a friend, and yeah. they're cool lending you their roaster. To, like it, these guys managed to charm their way into we anywhere. Call him Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they charm their way into anywhere. To, like, can I use your roaster to roast some coffee in the competition? <laughs> yeah, sure. Help yourself. <laughs> but now, it, and it's amazing that there's a community starting. And today we had a cupping, and there were two other roasters mm -hmm. turned up from from uh, nearby and we're cupping some coffees with a, uh, uh, an importer and that's like really cool. That, that's, how, that's how stuff starts. And you, and you know we had, we, we always joked over the last few years that we had the community way before we had the coffee. Yeah. So we had a community of interested people and we were, we, it was like there was a famine and we were all ordering coffee from England and the US <laughs> and anytime anyone would bring any coffee it would be like, we'd all be like, sure, yes, yes, everybody was like, yeah, yeah exactly. And, um, you know, it's, we've been open for a few weeks now, and uh, it's nice that we're. It's taken a while to get used to. I mean, the, 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 what these guys are talking about—they do this thing called frog fight, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, it, it, it's a cool name, and 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 they have seminars. So, a uh, friend of the show, David Walsh, did a seminar yes, he did. here 
a couple of months ago, you did some training days where you had like 100 baristas turn up, was we it? Have, we have uh, nights actually where we have yeah. um, once a month and 100 people show up to taste coffee and then uh, drink beers together and chat more or less. That's amazing. And on Monday I'm doing a little presentation for a group of roasters talking about, I'm scared. Too kind. They, they, they told me I was going to be talking to baristas. Like, so I've done a presentation for baristas and then they throw me in front of roasters. It's like, <laughs> eat him boys, it's all yours. <laughs> Beat him up. Um, Ask him the worst question. Yeah, yeah. So, so why don't you do the French roast? Yeah. Uh, but no, I, like, it's, there's a really cool community here and now obviously you, you know the, the coffee thing is happening. Yeah. The fact that an importer came and did a cupping in the shop today for roasters. Tells me one of the very right. cool things is you cannot teach much to a French person, <laughs> but the thing we were super enjoying this cupping, and we were eight of us enjoying and working on the cupping and slurping and doing all this. And the French people, the, the coffee shop this morning was crowded, and they were looking like, what's going on here? And they this, they realized that something was going on, and they were interested by the fact that we were not paying attention to their disinterest. Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, and they yeah. were like. They're not calling, they were not waiting for us, they're not, but I, oh, it seemed to be interesting, let me check what's going on. <laughs> and that, that was very interesting, and I thank you for being here and yeah. just that, doing this cupping, and yeah. that was cool. Yeah, that no, was it was cool. great fun, it was really, really good fun. They um, realized uh, something was going on abroad. That's, it's amazing, I mean, they're like, this is how it starts, and, and I, I can't wait to come back in 12 months time and see like you know, 10 coffee shops that you can yeah. take me on a tour that are all going to give me amazing coffee. Yeah. Um, and we'll drive a truck with our huge big car and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like with a, you know, help By that he means like this. our yellow bike outside. <laughs> <laughs> the moment we have the post office bike that we... It's, it's an impressive Second hand uh, post office bag. It like, looks very... No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but you Off know, topic. Yeah. <laughs> right, listen, uh, we're going to go and eat pasta before I go running, so uh, we should wrap it up here. Guys, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you thank for coming you on the camera. Thank I you, know sir. that the My Mug guys will love like, they, they hate it, me being on camera, and they love it when other people are, so I know that they will love it. Um, that but, can't be true. Oh, oh no, it is. They, they do this to torture themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is torture. I'm sure like, French. It, I mean, I I <laughs> the reason I put it out on a Sunday is for penance. So, <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, life is too short for bad coffee. Actually, before I wrap up there, there was a, I was watching the TV. The, these guys will get this, but I was watching the TV news the other day, and they were talking about this uh, mobile coffee cart. These guys in Norwich were making coffee, and they panned out of the shot. And on the, we don't sell coffee to them. They've got in big writing, "Life's too short for bad coffee." I trademarked it. It's mine. But life is too short for bad coffee. Mine. Cheers. Sure.